Hey everybody. So this is kind of weird, but I had an epiphany and I'm going to go there with it. So when I was about 15, 16 years old, my mom taught me how to make cornbread. So I don't do nothing major with the cornbread. I make it just like my mommy taught me because growing up, we didn't always have like milk or cream or whatever to add into the cornbread. So she told me how to add just the right amount of what I was needing into the cornbread. Because if you don't put just the right amount of either your flour or your cornmeal or whatever, it's not gonna turn out right. So, hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Anyways, when you don't put the right amount of stuff into your cornbread, it doesn't turn out right. It just doesn't turn out right. And that's kind of like serving God. Yeah, I went there. I'm, and trust me, this is going somewhere. Just bear with me. So, when you serve God, you have to put the right amount of yourself into serving God. Because if you don't, you can't serve Him correctly. So, a lot of times in life, we feel... We feel defeated and the world says you know what you can't do this this isn't gonna work uh, Satan will start dealing with you he'll start trying to find ways to absolutely break you down and one of the biggest things that you'll notice right now in the world is that Satan is using fear so I'm mixing this cornbread up and I know that if I wouldn't have just added one ingredient correctly that this cornbread wouldn't have turned out right. It's not going to turn out right. It's just not. But because I added just the right amount, it's going to be okay. So when you worship God, you have to put in just the right amount of yourself. You have to be able and be willing to help change the world. You have to put enough of something of yourself, of your soul, of your heart, and to help change the world. It's not just the world, it's your home. It's who you are as a person. You have to put the right amount in to be what God wants you to be. Like, for example, let's say God has blessed you with the gift of singing. Okay, you can sing, you go to church, and you help others worship God. But if you don't get up and work and do what God's called you to do and put in that right amount of yourself, you're not using your gift, right? You see what I'm saying? God expects 50-50. Okay? He expects us to put our full self into focusing on our personal salvation as well as the world's. And that doesn't mean, you know, hey, put the world before yourself. That's not what that means. What that means is you focus on your personal salvation, but you also focus on shining a light to others. That's what I say when I say 50-50. That's what I mean it. So God wants your full attention, 100%. There's no 50-50 with that. You have to have your 100% devotion to God. That means that if something is standing in front of you, something's... Um, blocking your blessing, something's blocking uh, what God has for you, then you have to stand up and say, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to have this in my life because it's blocking what God has for me. So, that's just back to what I'm talking about with the cornbread. Okay? So, had I not had one of these ingredients, okay, I used three things. Well, four things. In my cornbread, I use flour and I use cornmeal, I use water and egg. So, if I wouldn't have had enough flour, or I wouldn't have had enough cornmeal, then it wouldn't have turned out right. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you know, if you have something that's blocking you from putting in the correct amount of yourself, 
to God, then God can't bless you correctly. He can't work in your life if you don't let him. You can't allow things in this world to stop you from your blessing. It can't keep you from your blessing because God has something for everybody. It's not just for people that are saved. I mean, the lost can get found, y'all. It doesn't matter what kind of life you're living. It doesn't matter what your religion is. You can, if you are not where that God wants you to be, you have the chance to get there. You have a chance to make that difference in your life and to help change the world. This isn't just about our personal salvation. We've got to allow people to rely on our faith. Because sometimes even if people are saved and they are doing, they're living for God, sometimes their faith gets weak. And if we're not putting in the appropriate amount of ourselves to where our faith is strong with God, then we can't stand in the gap in the gap for people when their faith is weak. Do you see where I'm going with this? There is a reason and a purpose for everything in this life. We get tired, we get weak, and sometimes we feel like we're just never going to get through it. There's no way that we can overcome what's going on in our life. And that's when God steps in and says, you know what, you're wrong. You're wrong because I brought you to this point. I'm not going to bring you here and leave you. I brought you here and I have got you to where you need to be to learn and then I'm going to teach you what you need to do to get through it. So there's points in our life where there'll be things that's blocking us that'll tell us that, hey, you can't do this. But that's when you say, God, teach me. God, show me. Because God can open your eyes to things. You'll have, you may let's say like you're somebody, for example, like myself, I wear glasses. Sometimes my glasses will get foggy um, and I can't see well. Let's use that for instance. That's the same thing with God. Okay, sometimes our vision gets blurry and we can't see clearly what God has for us, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have something for us. That just means that something is blocking us from seeing clearly. Let's say the fire got too hot in your life and that, see, and that, um, that flame caused your glasses to fog up because it's so hot, but God can cool you down a little bit. God can step in and say, you know what, Satan, back up off of this person. This is my child. I'm not going to let you burn them anymore. You have to be on fire for God. Because the fire of God, the flame from God, it won't burn you. The flame from God blesses you. You need that in your life. You have to make, you have to make a decision that you're going to choose to live for God. That means you put aside anything that's blocking you. You put aside anything that's stopping you from being what God wants you to be. It may be somebody you love. It may be something simple. Like maybe something is telling you like, like I know with a lot of young people, they start church and they start thinking about all these things that they're going to have to give up for God. That's not how religion works. There will be things that you'll have to give up for God, but He will love you so much that He'll make you want to give them up. It won't be a struggle. It's not like what you think. So that's the reason I'm saying, if something's blocking your blessing, if something's blocking you from putting in the right amount to serve God, let it go. Just let it go. And if it's hard for you to let it go, pray. Let God move in your life, and God will help you let it go. He will give you comfort and understanding. He'll give you the, even the words that you need. To let something go or somebody go. That's part of life. God has a plan for us. Don't let Satan block you from his blessings. From Don't let Satan block you from God's blessings. From his plan for you. Because trust me. Don't waste your life living a lie. God has a plan for you. Let him work your life. Don't let it be Satan that's working your life. Let God work your life. I hope you all have had a great Sunday, and I hope this helps somebody. I had it on my heart, and I'll see you guys later.